Welcome to the Model Vision Podcast. Uh, today I have Kathy and John with me. We're talking about something pretty interesting uh, for Avian and, and for John and Kathy's customers, um, something called PEMS, right? Um, and, and we'll get into what that is and what the acronym means. Um, before we do that, uh, Kathy and John, do you want to introduce yourself? John, you can go first. Sure. Uh, I'm John Blankensop. I've been with Avian two and a half years now. I work in product quality and quality management and primarily have been working with uh, Navair and COMFRC uh, with developing uh, training courses in quality. And uh, now it's moved into this new area that we're going to talk about today called PIMS. So excited to be able to explain that. Hi, I'm Gary Wilson. I've worked with John Mike and Sop, uh, for almost uh, probably a few decades now. Uh, we've uh, got tremendous experience in quality uh, management, quality systems. Uh, we, I've worked in a variety of different industries, from uh, the power sports industry. Uh, Don and I worked together uh, at Harley Davidson during a very transformational uh, period. And uh, now I'm thrilled to be teaming up with John, uh, working at AVN, uh, so that we can promote some of the things that we've learned. Uh, throughout our career and our body of work, um, and we're going to share some of that with you today. Yes. Awesome. So thank you again, both of you, for being with me and, and chatting about this very cool topic. Um, let's, I guess, just dive into this. Mm-hmm. John, do you want to explain what PEMS is and, yeah. and break down, I mean, you can start with the acronym. What, what does it stand for? And then we can get into what it is. Yeah, so PIMS stands for Process Effectiveness Management System. And it is a methodology that Kathy and I, in collaboration with uh, COMFRC Quality and FRC Quality, have put together. Uh, And the focus is to uh, be able to assess a current maintenance process uh, and help understand the adequacy of the inherent design of the process and what we call the effectiveness of the process and then um, identify where we can make improvements to that process, all in an effort to increase the level of effectiveness of the process. And what's important to understand is that we define effectiveness as the degree to which a process is realized and the degree to which that process will achieve uh, planned results. So it's kind of like do what you say you're going to do and get what you expect to get. Right. Um, so I guess the, the biggest question on my mind is how did this come to be? Uh, you, you've explained to me that, um, this isn't necessarily something brand new, um, but it's something that you have, you personally have been able to put together and turn into what is now PEMS for, for our customer. Um, how, what was the development process like for that? How did, how did you get to. I have this idea should implement it and see how it works out. Cause right now it's still in like that pilot process, right? Or pilot program exactly. type area, right? Yeah. So it's been an interesting evolution. It really is, uh, the result of the quality basics training that we've done. Uh, so we have a real back to basics message in the training that we do that really talks about mastering the fundamentals of quality management and an effort to achieve sustained success. And all of the leadership across the FRCs uh, really have bought in to the message and the training. And the natural next question for them was, okay, show us how, right? How do we do it? And so we collaborated and came up with this approach that we call PIMS that just seems to be a natural progression in what we can offer the customer from training and awareness into practical application of it. And it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. 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 Does, so Kathy, do you help with the training or John either? Does Kathy help with the training um, piece of this? And, and I guess, do you want to talk more about the training aspect? And then um, obviously we can get back to PEMS in a second. Yeah, I'll let Kathy explain it a bit, but she's been on board with us over a year now helping in the development of the training. Okay. Um, and Kathy, what, what's your experience been like? Oh, it's been tremendous. It's really uh, uh, taking a, uh, a look at what we've been able to absorb throughout our careers 
and then take a look at uh, what the the future, the current, the future needs are uh, with our with our customers, or with our customer, and then making sure um, that we have a good understanding and do we have anything in our toolbox that can help them. And uh, that was a, a, a great relation, I think, for John and I uh, to take these uh, uh, some of these uh, very traditional type uh, quality uh, management uh, type tools and uh, take a bit of a hybrid approach, uh, agenda and augmenting them into a uh, a package uh, that that we think is a, a natural fit uh, for the processes and the culture um, uh, that we. Uh, that we've uh, grown to understand with our customers. So it is a, um, uh, 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 like John mentioned, a building block uh, from the basics. And uh, then we took that and uh, really set a, uh, I think a strong foundation for um, uh, uh, a possible cultural shift uh, to a more quality oriented uh, type approach, um, quality, more quality oriented uh, culture uh, because uh, like John and I have uh, have learned throughout our careers uh, at processes, uh, beat good people uh, every time. So we want to help. We want to help everyone be successful, right? Um, throughout uh, uh, the 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 journey to you know to make these uh, uh, to these these challenging uh, products to get those ready, uh, you know, for the fleet. Yeah. So and I do and I do participate in the training. It's uh, it's been a really great experience um, uh, to work out on the shop floor and get that connection of uh, the workforce and 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 help you grow that trust and that awareness, um, that collaboration um, with the uh, with the workforce at all levels of the organization uh, because that's really uh, as John will start to explain uh, the beauty of this type of process where we start with planning, we get into the control, we get into the improvement, covering that and trying to engage the entire organization. Yeah, I think that's a perfect segue for John to start talking about just that. So how does PEMS work? You gave that um, basic overview of it, and we are kind of skipping a little bit uh, through what I wanted to talk to you, but I think, like I said, perfect segue. How's it work? Um, we have, like Kathy just mentioned, planning, control, improvement. What what are those pieces, and um, are they very separate? So is it like you focus on planning for, say, a month, and then to the control and then move to improvement or how exactly does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you could think about what's happening at the FRCs, um, they're engaged in thousands of maintenance capability processes to support the fleet. And we come in with a process or a methodology like this, we're coming into existing processes. So this can be used to develop a new process or it can be used to improve an existing process and we're piloting it on improvement of an existing process. So we're coming in kind of in the uh, control end of this, the yes. assessment. So we start out, and if you can think of it like a V, where we start at the top of the V, we come down to the point and then come back up. The part of the V that goes down is what we call the get real part. So that's the part where we're assessing the process. So we're, we're going through a process flow diagram of the process. We're mapping what we call the input variables of the process to each of the steps that take place in a process. Those variables are what we call the seven M's of a process. And the M's are management, um, methods, manning, machine, measurement, material, and medium, or the environment that they work in. And so we assess the adequacy of these seven M's which we call the inherent design of the process. Uh, and then from there, we assess the effectiveness of the process. So how well is the process being realized or executed? And how well are we achieving the desired outcome of the process? And then from there, we do process risk assessment. We call a process failure modes and effects analysis. And then we lay out, okay, let's get real. This is what this process is. Then we start making our way up the V, and that's the get better piece. So get real to get better. And the get better piece is about containment, corrections, root cause analysis, and corrective action that addresses the uh, issues that we uncovered in the get real side of the V. So a very common sense, basic approach. Uh, but in the pilot that we conducted at FRC East, 
it bared a lot of fruit. We were able to uncover um, many opportunities to make the process better, to make the level of effectiveness better for the process. Uh, and uh, we were we were pleased with the uh, the application of it. So I guess one question that comes to mind is, what's the timeline for all of this? Did it take, how long did it take? Yeah, so getting down the, the get real portion of the V is uh, a two week process, okay. maybe five, five to 10 business days. We, in the piloted area that we looked at it, we got through it in, I think 12, business days. So we were getting into the third week and then the get better piece of it can go out 90 to 120 days. Uh, obviously if you find any issues that need to be immediately contained and corrected, we want to do those within five days of discovery, anything that needs to be corrected, maybe, uh, two weeks, 10 business days. We want to see a root cause analysis and a corrective action plan within 30 days. And then we want to see a uh, corrective action uh, plan implementation within 60 to 90 days. So the, the process could go out 90 to 120 days. Yeah. Yeah. The other question that comes to mind, so you go through the process, we go down the V, the get real, we come back up to get better. Um, how often would you say you should use PEMS on a process? So like say your, your current process that you're doing right now, you do the whole thing, you go through the planning control improvement. Um, when's the next time you look at the same process and decide if those changes again? Yeah, great question. So a big piece of PEMS is a portion that we call PASS, which is Process Assessment and Surveillance System. Okay. And so once we go down the V to get real, we establish a baseline of the process and we kind of lock it down. Then we're going to make changes to that baseline and validate that those changes do what we want them to do. And then we lock that process down, that revised process down, and then we put it under PASS. And so PASS is an opportunity for us to do layered process audits. And what I mean by that is we set up a program where process engineering will do a series of audits, production will do a series of audits, and then quality will do a series of audits. And what we see, what we're envisioning is reviewing the process on a quarterly basis yeah. through that uh, layered approach. So every quarter somebody's touching the process and looking to see that we've maintained that baseline that we've established for. And that's critical because if we go all through this effort and we're not able to sustain the gain, then it it's all for now. So that, that's a great question and a big piece of the... Yes. So I guess it to me, it sounds like it's not just that one, in my mind, one and done type of thing. You don't just come in, do PEMS, and then everything is great and wonderful from, wonderful from there. It's really that that management system piece of it, right? Where you're setting it up for the long run, not just the two or three or four weeks that you're in there um, right. doing all of the improvement and figure out what proved upon. Yeah, in fact, Kathy could speak to this as well. The, the big piece of this is institutionalizing process change management. And something we've learned over our years working at Arley together is as we developed motorcycle assembly processes, and we validated them, it was very important to maintain the configuration of that process and not let unauthorized changes creep into it. Right. So I know, Kathy, you've been through a lot of that over your career as well. Yes, it, the, it, it definitely uh, uh, feeds challenges, um, especially in a, um, uh, well, depending upon what industry you're in, but it is a, uh, in high volume, it's, it's 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 definitely a, a risk uh, to deal with in our in the uh, com FRT uh, world. It's also very valuable uh, when you're talking about establishing the baseline. Uh, for example, um, as one of the first steps in in planning, it's it's sometimes it's it's reestablishing the the baseline, and then in some uh, environments, it's it's actually establishing 
uh, a baseline and and uh, not uh, um, uh, that that is a very critical part uh, of of our process because it 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 is the um, uh, where you start to understand how the results are produced and you start to have the organization at all levels uh, really grasp an understanding of the anatomy of a process. And uh, so it is a very valuable exercise, uh, sometimes one that uh, is not as uh, emphasized, but uh, it, it is the, uh, uh, one of the, the starts of our process. I think that's extremely valuable and uh, highly regarded. And, and it is uh, where you can start to uh, put your controls in place so that you have um, uh, understanding the anatomy of your process. And as you start to uh, uh, look at risk and, and, and mitigating that risk as you're driving improvements and driving these changes, uh, to, have that, uh, to have that baseline is so critical, uh, especially when you're talking about, for example, uh, processes with the uh, um, uh, uh, critical sequence. Uh, so uh, it's a classic uh, see where uh, things will casually out on the shop floor or even an engineer start to get adjusted and uh, it can have a tremendous effect on uh, the product or the process. So so those are just uh, some 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 aspects uh, of, of and benefits that uh, this type of an approach can bring. Right. Um, so I did want to point out that John has already brought up the get real, get better mantra. Uh, and if, if you're listening and that sounds familiar, it's because it's coming directly from the CNO, right? Um, and it's, it's obviously smart for us to include that and John for to include that in his presentations, but it's not just this thing that John made up. It's something that um, is coming straight down from the chief of Naval, Naval Operations uh, and is, is obviously very important to our customers, should be important to um, anyone that is involved in the trainings or the processes that John is working on. and Kathy. That's exactly right. So the CNO um, releases what is called the navigation plan and the theme of that navigation plan or one of the themes is get real, get better. What's also interesting is um, the commander of NavAir has released uh, a document that includes a set of core values and behaviors for a successful culture. And in that list of behaviors, one of the items listed is get real, get better. So we really like that, um, that mantra that really speaks to us and the culture that we worked in back in the day. Right. You know, you can't get better unless you get real. You have to get into reality about the way things are, um, admit it, understand it, study it and then use it as a place to take it to the next level. So we applaud um, that approach and it fits in perfectly what it is we're, we're trying to implement. I think it supports it fantastically. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the last piece that I wanted to talk about and then we can, we're already 20 minutes in so we can wrap this up pretty quickly, um, is just the future of PEMS in a couple of things come to my mind that John, that we've talked about already in other meetings. Um, you talked about doing right now you're focusing on one process, right? And, and you talked about the next pilot is going to focus on five processes at one time. Right. What's, what are your just general thoughts about that? Do you think, yeah. um, I guess just how will it go? Yeah. Very excited about it. So, uh, FRC East is where we did the first pilot on one process. We, um, gave a briefing to uh, the executive director and the leadership team. They really liked the results. And then we started talking about scaling it. So how scalable is this? And that's a fantastic question. We decided let's do a scale up pilot. So we're going to scale up to five processes and see how well the organization can handle doing five simultaneously. And then from there, it will help us understand how we could scale it across the organization. So we're excited. We hope uh, in January timeframe, we'll start to kick off the scale up and uh, see where it takes us. <laughs> sorry. Um, so the goal, would the goal eventually be and, to have- And you know, so Go ahead, Kathy, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I was just going to mention that also a part of our vision is to 
uh, to have the, the, the train, the trainer, uh, where we start to, you know, plant, uh, uh the talent locally, uh, they can start to, um, uh, manage these, these projects themselves. And, it, and then that's, that's a big strategic point of sustainability of this initiative. Uh, I, I think that's a great point. What, one of the things we tell, um, the FRCs is that we aren't trying to do it to them. We're not trying to do it for them. We're really trying to do it with them. And organic transfer of the capability is a big piece of our effort. We're trying to teach them how they can be self-sustaining in that regard. So that's a great point, Kathy. Training them to train themselves is a, is a big, big piece of this. Yeah. So is the end goal to have every process within an organization go through PEMS? Is that fair to say? Well, I, that would be fantastic. Right. <laughs> um, I, I think there's probably going to be some kind of review of criticality. Okay. But obviously the processes I think that need it the most are the ones that we want to get after. And we also want to be able to scale it across all the FRCs. We don't want to have the output of one FRC to be more discernible than the output of other FRCs. So we're getting down to uh, FRC Southeast at NES Jax. At the end of January, Kathy and I will be heading down there to do a pilot of one and then see where that takes us. And then we're also talking with FRC Southwest at NAS North Island about doing the same thing uh, in the new year. So that scalability is also important as well. Right. Um, anything else about kind of, I guess, the future of PEMS? Um, I have written down here QMS tool. I don't know if you remember something about 9,000, ISO 9004, 2018. Does that ring any bells? Well, uh, it's a, it does ring a bell, but it's a it's a different assessment tool that we've okay. developed that okay. does support PIMS. So we do a higher level quality management system maturity assessment that is based on the um, contents of ISO 9004 2018, which is a maturity assessment document. And so that's going to address the higher level leadership and systemic elements that has to be in place to support a, an effort like PIMS. So we've actually conducted an assessment at uh, FRC East, and we're also, as part of what we're going to be doing at Southeast, we're going to be doing a QMS maturity assessment as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, besides that, I think we hit all of the points that we wanted to hit. Uh, I do want to wrap up with some shameless plugs. John, I know you have a couple uh, conferences coming up where people could actually hear and learn from you in person. You want to... Um, List those couple off really yeah fast. yeah so we found out uh this week that i have been selected to uh, present a two-hour workshop at the american society for quality world conference on quality and improvement and that's going to be in may may 8th through the 10th in philadelphia so very excited about being able to do that uh and then i will be conducting a training course uh within a training symposium that is taking place for the um, Measurement Sciences Conference that's being held in Anaheim, California in the beginning of April. So we've got uh, a couple of pretty neat venues that we're going to be able to talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects, which is quality management. We're, we're looking forward to being able to do that. Awesome. Kathy, I think you need to go out to Anaheim with John. I think she. I think she definitely does. Yeah. I. I'm going. Or are you? Very. I am. Very I'm going to do it. Very order, even if. I'm, yes. I'll give you the same opportunity. Then is there any? You have anything cool coming up? Like um, like John just spoke about. I would just really uh, supporting John. I I do uh, seriously hope to to get up in that ASQ conference and um, support him. Awesome. Um, and I I'm I uh, think we're going to be quite busy with the. Uh, uh, the pilot follow-up and uh, then the, the Southeast uh, initiative. So that's going to keep me pretty busy. I'm about, uh, right now uh, uh, just looking forward to the future and, and supporting John. Very cool. I know, and in, in, again, just to wrap this up a little bit differently, I know both of you have really cool stories about previous employment uh, opportunities that you've had in the past. 
sometime we'll have to talk about that. You both mentioned Harley already, and I know, uh, Kathy, you have some cool Indian stories as well. So we'll have to get on here and, and hear about all that stuff that uh, you did in the past too. So That's not so fun. <laughs> John, thank you. Love to do that. Very much for being on with me today. Kathy, you as well. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see everybody next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ian.